Hello and welcome to my little studio. Um, this afternoon I'm going to be painting a new character, so I'm going to show you kind of how I go about starting a painting. Um, his name's Bartholomew and I thought that you might be interested in seeing like the supplies and things that I use for a painting. So number one, always have a cup of tea, must have, and then for a palette, I use these like, save these little plastic um, covers from, you get them with like note cards and those kinds of things. Actually, I ordered a ton of them all the wrong size, so I pretty much have them for life, but um, these are really useful. And then I put just a little piece of cardboard, white cardboard inside so I can sort of see the colors as I'm mixing them. And then, um, this actually works as a really good little palette. Please excuse my cat. Oh. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so yeah, that, that works well. And then you can, when you're finished using them, you can just take this out and when I wait for the paint to dry and then throw it away and just pop a new one on. So you're not putting any of that nasty stuff into the water system or having to clean like uh, palettes and all that kind of business. It's just, it's a really simple way of doing it. Um, for brushes, here are some of my brushes. Um, I always use, um, I think they're called Filbert, this style, the flat white, they're wide, and then they're really narrow to the side. I pretty much always paint with these. And all my brushes are um, made of acrylic. Um, I don't use any kind of animal hair. A lot of brushes are made from um, like what are those little weasels. Yep, like weasel fur. And they're really inexpensive still. You can buy them and repeat. I, I think they call it sable. Um, it's just horrible, you know. Just if you're buying brushes, be humane and just buy the acrylic ones. They're perfectly fine. They're great and I like to use new brushes quite regularly so that's my treat to myself. <laughs> brushes. And um, my pa I stick always stick to the same colours, basic colours for all my paintings for my so that my palette is um, kind of when I paint all these different characters, the palette is always kind of like in the same family. Um, my palette that I use is Azo Green. Transparent orange oxide, it's pip. Um, a blue that I can't tell you what color blue it is because it's covered in paint, but it's kind of a kind of a kind of a greeny blue. <laughs> and, and then just a white. As you can see my, my brushes are, things are a bit messy, but never mind. And oh, I'm using sometimes I might use a little bit of raw sienna with the white just to get like a warm kind of creamy color, a little bit off-white. But that's basically, these These are basically my paints that I use all the time. I absolutely love these paints that are Graham paints. Um, they're very creamy um, and buttery and everything. And the other thing that I use, which I don't have on the table, but I kind of have a bit of an addiction to liquid. So I always use liquid um, and use that to kind of thin my paints. Um, Anyway, I'm going to stop this right now and go over to my easel and put some paint on here and start painting. Okay, um, I'm here at my little um, painting desk in the window and I'm going to be working on this painting today. Uh, this is a painting of a character, um, his name's Bartholomew Giesel and he is the... Um, the ringmaster of the Great Russian Cat Circus. Um, and he's actually in the second story, which I've just finished writing and I'm editing it right now. Um, and it tells about how, a little bit about him and how I met him and the rest of the circus. Um, so he's, he's a coyote and um, I'll tell you a bit more about him in a minute. But first of all, I'm gonna tell you about what this is. <laughs> 
This is just a plain old like 16 by 20 canvas, nothing fancy. And yesterday I sketched him in. And when I sketched him in, when I do that, I have like a rag and <laughs> the colors I was already telling you about here. And I just kind of sketch it and rub bits out and kind of just kind of get the general gist of what I'm gonna go for. And a lot of the times the kind of feeling I get at this moment, um, I really like it. So while I'm actually painting from now on, I'm trying to like smooth this all out and make it right, but I don't want to lose the, there's a certain quality to, to what this is that I always really like. Although when I look, you know, so <laughs> there you go. Um, and here's my palette. Are you, like I was saying, it's just like, I just put a little bit of it. Here's my little bit dirty liquid and the colors that I was telling you about. So I'm just going to start painting and then you can see kind of how I do it. So I think I might start with, with the bridge of his nose. I'm sorry, it's like I'm trying to show you how I'm doing, but I'm not very good at setting the camera up, so it's all a bit. But right now I'm just kind of adding a little bit of, like a bit more of a sort of warm brownie orangey colour to it. Sort of a bit like a making it a bit more sepia -y. And the way that I paint, I paint in like thin glazes. Because um, that's sort of how I, I used to do all my art on a computer. So I kind of learned how to work in layers. And so I kind of, I'm sort of got this little method where I replicate that way that I used to paint in layers. Um, and now I do it with oil paints. And then you can see like with this, I, I just kind of very gently just kind of just kind of stroke the paint on. See my hands in the way of the paint, paintbrush here. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this gentleman. Um, he, like I say, is I met him one day when he showed up at my front door. And it was very unexpected and um, it was a really snowy day, it was in the winter and the thing that struck me the most when I met him was just like, he was very, very debonair, I would say. And um, Very fabulous. And he had on a most beautiful red scarf around his neck. Um, and like I say, he traveled with the, with the, well, at one time it was called the Russian Cat Circus. Although it wasn't really anything, I mean, cats are with it, but all kinds of animals are a part of it. It's, it got its name because it was started by two um, cats. I have a little note here about how it, about the history of it. Um, it was founded in the late 1800s by these two cats named Jules and Sophia Laurent. 
and they were both Russian blue cats, which is where it got the Russian part of the, its name. Um, and they were both, um, they had a really extraordinary balancing act involving household furniture. Um, and they'd go from door to door, just <laughs> balancing on people's furniture and earning some money. And eventually that kind of turned into like a whole circus act and others joined them and they ended up with a whole circus from that. So that's kind of the, the history of the Russian cat circus. Um, and this guy, Bartholomew, he was um, born in the woodlands outside the town of Crested Butte in Colorado a long time ago. And um, his family kind of lived out there and um, they had a very keen interest in small livestock. And um, he kind of got a reputation for being um, <clears throat> very, very nimble on his feet, let's say. And um, he came to the attention of the, this guy, his name was Grenville the Great, and he was a retired vaudeville star. And um, he wanted a companion to travel with, so um, they traveled together and went all around Europe with different troops. And as he got older, he just had a lot of um, charisma and he has this very beautiful deep voice he's got a lot of kind of star power i guess and um he worked his way up and he ended up being the again having the role of um ringleader and when i met him he was um he wasn't the first character from the guy from the uh, person from the circus that i met the first one was oleg the magnificent who's incredibly amazing hypnotist cat. I don't know if you know much about him, but he was kind of the the first guy from the circus that I met. And then um, Wild Bill, I'll, I'll show you more about these guys another time, but um, I actually have Wild Bill's picture right here. So <coughs> here, here he is over the top. This is, there he is, um, Wild Bill and he's, he has a knife throwing act in the circus and um, so I met those two and then ultimately I got to meet here, this, this guy here. So I'm noticing, I'm looking at the camera, I'm noticing that I don't know how much you can really, how detail you can really see because it's looking a bit blue, blown out but just keep going for a bit. Eventually I'll learn how to do this better. And so this is just kind of what I do. I, when I first started, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm not saying a super do now, but I used to remember thinking it was kind of like, a little bit like putting on makeup. <laughs> so that kind of helped me to, I'm sort of putting makeup on them. And then I, I use this, an old rag, like here. I do end up rubbing a lot of stuff off as much as putting it on. That's kind of, <laughs> that's the mark of a true professional right there, so. And then I paint really super thin. Um, and that way it dries really fast and then if I make a mistake I can I can paint over it without it starting to add a lot of texture to it so um And then let's see if we can make a, make a really nice grey here, because it's got a lot of, yeah, that's a nice one. So 
So. The nice thing about like keeping your, your palette really small that I've found is that it kind of means everything sort of all goes together and, and you don't have to think so hard about whether things kind of, how things kind of are going to whether they're going to sort of marry together and look good together because they're all coming from the same root and I know like I've been taught that by artists who went to art school and know what they're doing um, and I think it's true like I'm just so happy with the one of palette I have used right now that don't really um, deviate from it very much because I then I don't have to think about it and I can put my efforts into thinking about other stuff. See, it's like here, putting that around the side there gives him this like, like little kind of thickness to his mouth and I've kind of got like a little smile going. Let's just... Like that. Same on the other side. Try to kind of keep things symmetrical-ish. And I just do all these like weird little dabs. This is kind of my painting, <laughs> my painting style. <laughs> it's like a lot of little tiny like. Ch -ch 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 -ch. I like the way it sounds too. Like, kind of like petting these characters with the brush. <laughs>
I'm really good at it. Just sort of bringing the wall a bit of fizz. Markings that are kind of darker, which which kind of came out like this, and then sort of down. like that. And a few kind of darker hairs in this mix here. I'm just going to retrace where his mouth is. And then one of the things is not, it's just to be careful not to like overpaint things if you don't need to. Like, so you, you can see with his eyes, I haven't painted them in yet, but I kind of paint a little bit and then rub a bit out and, and it's the same with his nose. Like it, it's okay to have the canvas showing to read it. Have to get too like heavy handed sometimes when you do that, you kind of lose the the magic of what you're doing, or the um, it just becomes a little bit too th kind of. If you paint too thickly, I mean, some people can do it and it looks amazing, but for myself, like if I I kind of lose my way of what I'm trying to do, so I kind of go very slowly a little tiny bit at a time. So there you go. It was really cool this morning we had these like um ravens outside the house. Like I, <laughs> like growing up in England I absolutely loved the sound of like the songbirds in the morning so much. Um I really miss that, but here, where, where we live on the island, we have, um, we don't really have songbirds, but we do have a lot of ravens, <laughs> and they, they're really funny, because they do, like, they're really amazing, majestic, there's a lot of them, and they do impersonations of, like, car alarms and dogs, there's one that does a dog impression. It's just, they're really cool, but it's not always the most restful thing to go outside and have them like all doing, they're all up there doing that all the time. <laughs> they're just, they're quite something. <laughs> and also here is, the other thing that's kind of interesting here is that we don't have, um, we don't have any squirrels. Um, we have lots and lots and lots of foxes, which is super cool. Um, and then we have rabbits that people brought over. I think at, at the end of the 1800s, they brought rabbits over. Um, that's mainly what the foxes eat. And then um, we have lots of deer here which are, you know, literally, there's so many of them. And we have, I guess we have flying squirrels, but I've yet to see them. And we have really beautiful, like, pileated woodpeckers. Um, sometimes they come, well, I haven't seen them for a few weeks, but sometimes you'll see them in the garden. We have some really rotten trees just out of the window here that to the side that um, they just love them because they get all the they 
love going there and getting all the bugs and everything out of them. <laughs> So it's really quite cool, the wildlife. And we have like a, although I've yet to see it in action, we have like a, a bioluminescent bay. Um, and in the summertime, when it gets warm enough in the at night, the, the water glows. Um, so... I'm looking at this and I'm realizing that this is a lot higher up than this one. And so I spent a lot of time doing this. <laughs> like now I'm, I'm trying to bring this one up a bit so that it matches kind of. So, and then maybe bring this one down a little. There's a, a lot of this faffing and this is still like just underneath like when I've got all this I use this to just figure out how it all how it's all gonna go and then once I've figured it out then um then I kind of go back over and do all the detail like I can see now I prefer it like lower down like this so what I'm gonna do is take this light colour out further. And still needs to come out. Okay, let's try and pop it back in. And I make a lot of mistakes. So, I don't know if any of my friends see this and they're professional artists and like that, but if you, um, if you see this and, you, and you're thinking of trying to do some painting, just, um, kind of like, it doesn't matter if you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. I literally, don't know what I'm doing most of the time, like I, I make so many mistakes. <laughs> but it's just that whole thing about like, if you do something wrong, just, just have another go and just keep going, you know, like, it's, it's the journey, not, not the destination. Like, I'm painting this now, I, I don't know how it's gonna look when it's finished. I mean, it could go in, it, it's, it's taking, I'm just painting it a little bit at a time and then I'm thinking, oh gosh, that, 
this is the next thing that I need to work on or this didn't quite, this could be a little bit different here and I just keep going until eventually like, I think it's good enough. Like I never, I've never got to a painting where I actually think it's finished because I think I could just keep going forever just doing this. I could still be on the first picture right now, like from, I think I started painting like 10 years ago. I could literally still be faffing about with the first one at this point. <laughs> Cause it's like, it's and like when you're doing this, it's like, it's so fun to just to, it's like meditation or something. So one thing I decided to do um, is um, I'm going to make another little thing underneath on my YouTube channel and so I'm just going to do another little, th so I'm going to keep doing this. I don't know if this will be fun or boring, it, it's only day one, but for you guys to see, if anybody ever wants to see this, but the other thing I'm going to do is um, I am going to do a second little channel or whatever you call it underneath and it's going to be um, like it's going to be a bit about the world every day and little bits of stories so I can fill you in about like all the characters and the, and the stories and the house and the world I made a map which I'll show you so that you can see like how these all fit together um, And um, because painting's really fun, but the thing that absolutely does it for makes me so happy is like is the fact that all the, each little painting of these little guys it's not the kind of combines with other ones and it, and it's actually helping to create a picture of this world that. Um, I have in my mind and I've had it in my mind for a long time and I, I'd like to share it with you so um, I'm really excited to, to, to be able to do that and I just finished um, drawing the map yesterday so that'll be really cool to be able to share that Um, so now I'm, I'm taking the brush strokes, I, I was bringing them down this way to create like a volume going sort of down and now I'm going with some like slightly light ones and I'm, if you see like I'm pulling them back, this is like a makeup tutorial. So like. If you can see, I'll, I'll finish this side and then you can see what I'm talking about. And then, because they're, they're both up and back at the same time. So you see, I don't know if you can see this, but on this side, it's starting to go back this way. On this side, it's still all coming around this way. So I'm going to do the same on the other side so you can see how that goes. And this is still just like kind of underpainting because I'm I'm trying to get a feel for how his how his face is was and um, I made some sketches at the time but there was a lot going on when he was visiting like he came to our house he came to the house when um, his the rest of the circus were there and his friends were there and so there's a lot of celebrating when when he was there and um, 
there wasn't really time to be able to like really paint paint a picture of him. So I had to kind of take a few sketches and then remember it from I'm trying to go from memory a bit. And when I'm at this point, I don't worry too much about um, shadow. This is this this is kind of like how I'm building some. I'm sort of building something off off the canvas to to then kind of be able to manipulate how I want it to go. He's, he kind of had this like very pointy nose. I think a lot of the best people have very pointy noses. It's a mark of fineness. do it for today so that I can let this dry and then come back and have another go another day. I think it's not, I didn't spend too long on it. If, if I go for too long, I, it all starts to go horribly wrong because the paint starts to get a bit muddy. Um, but I think that wasn't so bad for a first day. So, um, I am going to stop now and um, thank you for joining me and um, I'll be making another video of this very soon. Okay, take care. Bye.